we've made our bed now. <laughs> we have to <laughs> we have to lie in it and hopefully we can sleep in it. Hello and welcome to another Artist Opus video. My name is Byron and we are still sweating away with our two week army project, which we're squeezing in around everything else, including just horrible 30 degree heat. We have a pretty tasty conversion with a horrible drying period, which is looking kind of okay over to my side, which I'm quite pleased about. Uh, we have some decent amount of progress with our assembly. Maybe we are 90% of the way through maybe 85%, and there may or may not be a little last minute change in direction. Of course there is. Uh, I mean, why make it easy for ourselves uh, with what is actually going into the army? So we'll cover all of that in what's coming up. Uh, if you have missed any of the previous episodes, check them out below. They'll be linked in the pinned sticky. And if you've got any questions whatsoever about anything, I am going to be taking this army to an event. So you can ask me about gaming, painting, whatever you like. Uh, we're here to answer your questions. And uh, thank you very much for joining us on the journey. Let's jump in. quick decision that I've made for the army. I've ripped some spikes off this guy and the reason is AXA. So this one's got spikes on him, the Vanguard have got spikes all over them. Now it doesn't look too much like this one to be limiting access, that's not in a bad location. I can come from this angle, this angle and underneath not too badly but once you've got a head here and stuff, these ones, especially this one given the head is looking in the same direction as a spike, I'm going to limit my access to it and that is going to slow things down or the reduce the quality of my paint job. It feels frustrating to not glue these on at this stage because I'm just going to have to glue them on later but I think I'll get a high quality paint job without them attached and it could make my life quite a deal easier. Hopefully it is worth the time you know having to do stuff separately later. It also means that I can base coat the spikes by airbrush or you know spray them white or do something else so it may well be a, a double benefit but the access thing is definitely going to be a thing. I don't want to be forced to using a smaller brush than I would do otherwise or to, um, you know, just not be able to get the right angle, or the right coverage or something like that. A productive evening was had. We made a fair bit of progress. We did make a fair bit of progress. Riders are not done, but horses are done. Vanguard, all but there. Every little counts and bliss barbs. We've got one tenth. There we go. <laughs> Just got to got to note down everything. Actually, as well, um, significant progress was made on the epitome, which I'm going to pronounce correctly for the first time ever in my life. There we go. So we are looking slightly better than we were. Welcome to my slightly chaotic desk. So I thought I would show more specifically the reason why I leave some things overnight. So this is a two part shoulder piece from the in the epitome model. Um, there's no way that I can make that look good in one session. So I glued this yesterday. And then what this allows me to do is I can either scrape it with a knife without it getting fluffy or anything weird because it's fully dried or my favorite, the sanding paper and we end up with something far closer to what we want. This may even take a couple of goes. You can put some sprue glue in there, which is a mixture of plastic glue and plastic shavings. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a better way to get a smoother bond. This one might take a couple or a little bit more sanding, but it'll end up way nicer than it would have been if I just, you know, bodged it together in one session. We've got some Vanguard pieces that are being worked out there. I've mixed them up on the way to assembly, so I've opened up my second box to get the instructions out and we're going to play who's who. Uh, we have Hellstriders, one full set and one set of steeds and the epitome is going to be finished fairly soon so we actually are making a little bit of progress here and as well as that we've got 10 demonettes which are going to be brought up to the level of the archer here for my bliss barbs looking really nice um, so I'm prepping all of the bodies at once and then I will um, pop heads on and then prep all of the bow arms and bow shoulders of the models because they're the most tricky bit as I have to chop it off. Um, I shouldn't rush that, it's worth doing that type of thing carefully. So I'll take my time with that one. And uh, then we'll have a large part of the battle line and the troops assemble basically. End of assembly sesh. Let's ignore how messy this looks. This is actually finished. We've had some bits that were drying overnight heads have been attached though so we're good to rock on with that one now which is fantastic. I could not be more pleased with 
how these are looking. That's one we already saw. And then I had one with a more kind of shoulder back casual pose going on. Looks wicked. I'm really trying to go with the flow of the models in the positioning of these arms. Um, the right ones don't particularly allow for that as much, but this, you know, these look amazing together. I've always loved the Demonette models. Had a lot of time for them. So super pleased with that. Good progress. Uh, got a load of Demonette bodies uh, for next session when I go through a uh, an, an arm attaching <laughs> kind of procedure on everyone. We're gonna go to surgery. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to tick off some more things on the Gantt chart. So progress is progress, wherever it is, however much it is, however small it is, it's still helpful and will help us move forward. You know, we'll dodge angle. It's 31 degrees in the UK, it is absolutely disgusting. Absolutely grim, horrible. So what can we do now? Um, bliss barbs, I think we can take these two about here, which is awesome. Heads and arms to go, really good. Epitome is finished, amazing. Uh, no further on the keeper or anything else, but you know, all mounts up, so bit by bit we are getting there. The vest is out again, it's still horribly hot. I'm still being hampered by hay fever as well as a hangover. Fantastic mix, really recommend it. What do we have to go? We have actually made some progress, uh, so I will jump to me filling in the army gun chart soon and I think also there is going to be a small change of course it, not because we're behind or anything or because something hasn't worked but the Vanguard actually despite the fact there's only three of them in a unit which is less than five obviously um, if I were to put in knights or something like that they do take quite a lot of assembly and for the way that I want to get the quality that I want on these and smoothing joints and stuff like that there's quite a lot of points where I have to leave them overnight so I think I may just have three Vanguard in the army and um, I might change course now. There's a gaming reason for that as well, so it kind of all fits in together. Anyway, let's jump to me filling in where we are at so far, and let's see what we can do. Coming up in the rest of the episode, I will be jumping into some serious converting, which will be on the Keeper of Secrets. Gonna sort out her wing, which has still yet to be attached. And of course, a Keeper of Secrets is not meant to have wings. These are Marathi's wings, so I have to... I've already done some of this work in a previous uh, episode of ours, uh, so I've kind of hollowed out the inside of this section here and we do have quite a good um, dry fit going on. So it, it will work, it's just I want to make it super sturdy and like really, really rigid um, and durable just, you know, for gaming use. This isn't a display piece, this is going to get put on a table, hopefully it looks lovely. But um, yeah, it needs to be made, you know, absolutely bomb proof and having a large spiky thing pointing out at pretty much 90 degrees to your model is already a recipe for it to be you know the most obviously easy broken part of the model so that is all it let's jump into taking off some boxes so we can start on a nice positive note we have finished the vanguard wonderful we have finished the bliss barbs amazing so all we have left are um the riders from the Hell Striders, which I've made a start on. Let's put in a little sliver there. Makes us feel better about how far there is to go. And that leaves us with Vanguard, Keeper, and that is it. However, let's jump to the computer and let's make a couple of changes in our list and then go for a trip to pick up one more unit that I'm gonna slide into the army. Here we have our list as it stands now. We've got the Contorted Epitome, said it right this time. Sigvold, Keeper Secrets, Hellstriders, Hellstriders, Bliss Barbs, Three Vanguard, Three Vanguard, and Cogs. Now, I do not want to have to build another Vanguard, or I think that the time would be less to build a unit of knights and one other thing. So we're going to get rid of the Vanguard. And if we were to put in a Chaos Source for Lord. And some Chaos Knights. That adds, adds up conveniently to exactly 2,000 points. I get a little bit more variety in there, which is quite important for me, you know, visually. I think it looks quite nice, although I do like the idea of having, you know, symmetry, one on each side and that type of stuff. Um, but I think that they'll still look really good. They may well be faster to build, and I'm pretty sure I have one of those Chaos Sorcerer Lords somewhere that is assembled but not painted. I will have to check into that. Um, 
and I might do, you know, like a Slaneshi conversion on it or something like that. Or maybe it's an excuse to use a nice other model um, and blend it with the Lord or something like that, which shouldn't take too long on a single model and it's not too hard to paint. Whereas I think the Vanguard are actually quite involved models. Uh, the Knights are still fairly detailed, but they are overall a bit more simple. So that is the new list. We are going to go and get the bits for that now and we're going to rock on. And we're also going to work on that keeper. Maybe I will do her first to allow drying time for the wing, which I am really quite worried about. I don't want it to droop in drying or whatever, so I want to be there to kind of coax it back up if it gets droopy or we'll rig up some ridiculous supporting structure to allow it to dry in exactly the right place. Anyway, that needs working out. Let's jump in. Before we start doing anything fancy at all, I'm going to be doing a all over dusting of the mini because it has been sat, you know, static for so long, doing absolutely nothing. And then the other thing I'm going to do, let me grab a pointing tool, is I'm going to go all around it, checking for anywhere where I might have left some stuff that I want to clean up. Um, I just noticed back of this arm here, that's a good example. Um, and just with a little bit of sanding, I can do that. If I put a great big wing on, there's a chance that I'm going to lock out some zones in terms of access to them. So I'm just going to give it a once over, all over for sanding. And then we're going to work out how to make our final preparation scrapes uh, to be able to socket this to this perfectly, which is going to be quite hard actually. We've got a really good bond on the other one, and that's something that we'd like for this one too. Now, I have one key issue that I need to resolve before I go full steam ahead with this. So, uh, to a certain degree, the plastic will melt stuff and will we'll help this out, but I need to make sure that it looks quite good from that angle, but from other angles, like the shoulder blades coming out too high, and then when it's at a good angle from above, it's not uh, as good an angle from below. So I basically need to work out the points of contact where this is not working, and that's really, really fiddly. All I can think up is we're going to actually paint it, and then we're going to use where that paint rubs off or doesn't, or rubs through, as an indication of what goes where. And I'm gonna work super quick because it is mega, mega hot here. Obviously I've used black because I don't want this to be subtle. Okay, that's where I want it. So interesting. So you can see why I've tried scraping more because I thought they were touching there, but actually it seems those are our points that are causing issues. So that's where I'm gonna give it a little bit more scraping love and then we will try the same process again. I'm just gonna wipe this off and we can kind of, you know, repeat if needed. Some of you may remember this from Lockdown Army. This is one of our secret weapons. So this is a curved X-Acto blade. The normal one's an X11. Uh, I think this might be an X12, but I could be wrong. And what this is gonna allow us to do is get in, well, we need to be able to make concave scrapes and you can't do that with a flat blade. It's just impossible. There's no point even trying. So for example, in here, we know where we're going for. Now, if you've got a Dremel, you could be doing this, but at this stage, I feel that being precise um, and taking a little bit longer is worth a lot more than the potential for a slip and a mistake. A mistake is the slowest thing possible. So even going a little bit slower and more carefully and reducing the chance of a mistake, I think is a good idea. So that's already made quite a big difference in terms of the indent. And then the other point we got was here. Now this is gonna be behind the wing, so I think we can just get rid of that bit. Now if it's causing issues and it's gonna be hidden, let's not muck about. Let's chisel it out. Hopefully that wasn't too aggressive. Okay, that is feeling slightly better already. Now I think this little bangle here, this is also fiddly. This little bangle here is another potential contact point issue. So that's that's what we've dug away. I'm gonna hopefully make it so this muscle can kind of socket around the bangle. Here, remember we can fill this stuff. We just need to get as close, as strong a bond as possible. So that means the most areas being <laughs> pretty much in contact. And then we will make some sprue goo and that will, oh, we're good. That that has made a big difference. So I might need to sand the very top of this off. Um, I think we're gonna be able to do that on the model. So looking at access, my favorite way to sand anything 
is like this, holding it between four fingers. And with a wing there, I think we should be able to still get an all right angle to do that, which will help us kind of grind this down organically. That is already a much stronger point though. I'm really pleased with that. That's, that's taken a lot of work to achieve, but that should be really steady. I think it's getting to the point now where I should just probably stop tinkering because I actually run the risk of making it worse uh, by accident. So I will do a tiny bit more on one more point and then we're just gonna rock on and we're gonna cross fingers very, very hard. All right, so I think actually, to be honest, I just made things worse. That is what it is. And if I needed any further indication that I should just rock on and stop mucking about, that's good enough for me. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some sprue goo and then we're just gonna uh, try put it in the right place. We're gonna press it in. We're gonna be very patient, hold it there. And then, you know, wh whatever we're left with, we will deal with. So I'm just gonna take a bit of sprue here. Now, of course, there are other ways to bond things to each other. You know, you've got um, really, really, really strong um, epoxies out there and stuff like that. The reason that we're doing this is I want a plastic to plastic bond and I want it to um, to be durable and not brittle. And the only real way to do that to this degree, you know, like to make a piece that I could pick it up by is by making sprue glue. So we've got a full plastic bond. All right, moment of truth. Maybe we need a little more in there, but I think this should be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to this piece, not the other piece. Make sure it goes right up to the edges. Normally I'd leave this for a little while, but... Okay, I'm going to start getting shaky hands now, aren't I? I had a banana beforehand to calm the nerves. So... There we go. So basically at this point, it is there and we're just going to wait. I'm not bracing it at the end of the ring because that's going to wobble it. I'm just bracing it with my thumb and I'm pressing it as strongly as I can into the angle where I want it to dry. I don't have the ability to tell it upside down and look how it's looking underneath and I can see that the shoulder blade is sticking out a little bit too much at the top but they are all things that I feel we can deal with so we're kind of, we've made our bed now. <laughs> we, have to, <laughs> we have to lie in it and hopefully we can sleep in it and um, I'm just going to leave my thumb here for a bit. I have prepared an audiobook, so um, that there is, you know, boring as hell, but sitting here for five minutes could save, you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes of repositioning or faff like that. Just need to be vigilant. Constant vigilance. Our lady is drying at a slightly rogue angle over to the side, and I am being like an absolute idiot. I wonder what it's like to be organized. I have found the head, the ponytail, whatever bit this is, a, a part, and the shield for the keeper, which is wonderful. But she has a hole here, which is meant to be filled by a tail, which I haven't found yet. So I am currently feeling like an absolute idiot trying to work out where the tail is. It's quite a small, like wormy piece. God knows, so I'm gonna try and hunt that down. <laughs> right, we found it. I am as predictable as I am stupid. Of course, it is in the box with some Night Haunt models and the bits from a Mega Boss. So that makes loads of sense, doesn't it? But we have found it at least. So a quick one while we're here lamenting my stupidity. If anyone can tell me the little subtle conversion or thing that I have changed about that demonettes uh, to, well, hopefully make them look quite cool visually in a subtle manner, do let me know. Uh, if anyone's built the kit, maybe they had the same key annoyance that I had in a load of ways with it. But uh, yeah, I have, um, I have made a couple of nips and tucks and repositions. If anyone can guess what it is, we will send them a paint set. First one to guess correctly wins. Okay, so here we are at Element. Let's go and get some goodies. Mm -hmm. 